Okay, so this video we're going to go over the main concepts in a control chart. And the control chart is one of the magnificent seven of quality tools, and we covered all the other ones in, um, in a previous video. So what, this, what the control chart tries to get at is to, the basis of control chart, is that there's natural variation in any process. And the variation can come from variations in raw material, variations in machines, variations by people. And there's some natural variability that is perfectly fine. But there could be some um, causes of variability that are assignable to, um, to something going wrong in the process. These are the out-of-control processes. And our goal in quality is to try to continuously um, address these out-of-control processes and try to make them better. So control chart um, is based on this idea that there's natural variability and then there's out-of-control or assignable cause variability. And in a control chart, the way that it works is there's a center line that is generally the average of the whatever the thing is that you're measuring. Could it, it could be some sort of characteristic, it could be a number of defects, but there's an average that's, in, that's generally the center line. And then there's an upper control limit and a lower control limit in the variability. And those limits um, pretty much indicate the sort of acceptable or natural unavoidable variability. And anything beyond that is something we want to be able to catch. So in, um, in a control limit, it's kind of visually lets you see how this is, um, changes over time. Often, sometimes people call this a Schuert control chart, and that's because he was the one that kind of made them popular. And generally, what that he he does is he has the center line at the mean, and he go and in the U.S. standard is is usually we go up and down three standard deviations. A standard deviation is just a unit of measurement of variability. Um, it could be any other way of measuring something, but this is pretty much the standard the Schuert developed um, for control charts. Um, so this is, it, again, it's used to detect assignable causes um, that lead to improvements in the process. So this, it ha helps quite a bit in guiding continuous improvement. It's not just a way of monitoring it, but it really is a, is a means of doing process improvement. So this is um, what is often in, in connection with the control chart is an out of control action plans. And it really looks at, well, what do you do when it is out of process? What, how do you go about um, figuring out what the process, what the reasons are? And this is a simple flow chart, but it, you, you develop these kind of flow charts for your particular process to be able to troubleshoot what's going on. Um, so again, there's two types of control charts, going back to the control chart. There's two types. There's either variable or attribute charts. We're going to first look at variables, and then we'll look at attributes. Um, but in general, they're all the same. Uh, designing a control chart, you have to make decisions about the type, whether it be variable, attribute, what exactly you're going to be measuring, the sample size, the control limits. Again, remember I said that um, Seward had some ideas on that. Frequency of samples, and then detection of out of control. So usually the control limits in the U.S., the standard is plus or minus three standard deviations. It's usually what we use. Um, the sample size. So we really want to look at this idea that the probability of detection um, of a problem will increase with sample size. But it's also, um, we need to balance that against the cost of sampling. We can, we can actually sample everything, and that, that will be an infinite sample size. Um, but there's a cost associated with that. And then frequency of samples. It usually, it, usually people take small samples more frequently, but again, if we sample all the time, we'll have a better chance of catching out of control situations. Um, but, but it's also off, again, um, it's balanced against the economics. So again, having to do with you know, both the frequency of um, sampling and the number of samples. It, sometimes people combine that into what's called um, sort of a, a sample, an average run length. So in this example, what this is, we, we calculate this thing called average run rate, ARL, which is 1 over P, where P is the probability of any point being outside the control limits. An example, if we're in a Six Sigma process, the probability of it being outside the control limits is 0 0.0027. So you remember that's actually the value of plus or minus um, three standard deviations. 
And the, so there, that gives us an ARL of 370 units. So that means that every 370 units, we could expect to test a false positive meaning that nothing's wrong in the process, but it will come back as outside of the three standard deviations. The average, another way to look at this is average time to signal, where we look at how often we're um, sampling, and we can actually convert the 370 units into hours. In this case, the example is what if we, exam we sample every hour? That means 300, every 370 hours we would have a false positive. And this gives us a guideline of looking at, well, you know, exactly how are we doing that many samples? How often might we have a false positive? If we're getting, if we do um, 10 samples of 10 every day, that's 100 samples. So we might every four days have an out of um, control limits that is natural. And is that something that we would want? Another question is, that what are the patterns of the control chart? How do we know whether something is out of control, indications of out of control situations? What we really want to be doing is any non-random pattern. So we might see some random variation, in fact we will, but we want to say when is it non-random? So there's a, some, some rules that Western Electric developed and peoples have added to them over time. So one of them is that if one point is beyond the three six six between the three sigma, either plus or minus, then that means there's a possible out of control situation. If two of three consecutive points is beyond two sigma, if four or five consecutive points is beyond one sigma, if eight consecutive points is on one side of the center, or six points in a row are increasing. And there's also others, like if there's some sort of cyclic um, thing going on or some clustering, um, those are also indications of out of control. It's a little tricky sometimes to, to read a control chart and determine when, it, when are the things out of control. Um, in a control, th there's two phases. The first phase is creating the control chart, which is looking at a situation when it's in control and creating the control chart for that. And the second is using the control chart to record the points to, to do the process. So it's, it's important to, um, we often talk about these together and the problems we're doing are together, but um, these are definitely two distinct phases in control charts. So again, control charts are one of the Magnificent Seven, and it's trying to track variability into cause, um, assignable causes, and unavoidable um, natural variation.